How's it going guys, it's Josh here. So today I have a very interesting keyboard to show you, quite different from anything we've seen before. It's called the Obins and Pro, and if you're the sort of person that needs a really small keyboard, maybe you've got limited desk space, then this might be worth a look. It's known as a 60% keyboard due to its size, you'll notice we have no number pad or even any arrow keys. It's compact and thought to be useful in terms of ergonomics, as all the keys are within reach of your fingers, and all the keys that you would have needed normally can still be accessed with a function key. Thanks to the guys at Sane Sonic for sending me this keyboard to review, let's get into it. So first let me just list the specs for you. It's mechanical, it has Bluetooth, it's wireless and comes with a nano USB receiver. It's got RGB lighting and PBT keycaps, what more could you want? Starting with build quality, it's pretty much just an angular block of plastic. There's no metal on the chassis, although I don't think this is a bad thing, it makes it fairly light if you're going to be travelling with it. The keys are all recessed so they shouldn't get damaged and just in general it feels solid. There's no flex at all in the chassis and I definitely wouldn't be worried about breaking it. Simple, chunky, kind of boring but 10 out of 10 for function. Talking of simplicity, there's no logo on the front but we do find the Obins logo on the reverse of the keyboard. You might have noticed that there are no retractable feet on the back, only rubber pads. Due to the pure thickness of the chassis at the rear of the keyboard, it does elevate the typing angle quite a bit, so this is not really an issue, it also means less stuff to get broken. Included in the box we also get a keycap puller and a flat micro USB cable. We get quite a few options with this keyboard when it comes to switches and colours, you can get it with blue, brown or red switches, and we get a colour choice of black or white for the keyboard itself. By the way, it's US layout. The model I've got here has the brown switches, they're kind of between black and blues, tactile but non-clicky, so good for if you need to keep the noise down. Here's a typing test. The keys are very quiet, it uses Gatron switches, although unfortunately we do get a loud bump from the spacebar, which sort of ruins it a little bit, this is probably due to the type of stabilizers used. Other than that, the typing experience is quite nice, it's got PBT keycaps which are generally considered more superior to their ABS counterparts, which are what you see on most mechanical keyboards. Let's move on to some of the features. So it comes with built in Bluetooth, to connect it to a smartphone or tablet, just hold FN and press B. Now apparently it comes with two Bluetooth modes, Bluetooth 3.0 and 4.0, we want to use 4.0 because it's better, it's FN plus 0 for that. Once you've done that it should be discoverable from your device, just click it, you'll be given a 6 digit code, enter this on the keyboard and you'll be good to go. In terms of reliability, it's very good, no lag that I can notice, so good job here. Now for the strange bit. So I thought that the nano USB receiver that we get is just the same as you get with any wireless mouse or keyboard. The 2.4GHz wireless frequency where you just plug it in and it works. Not the case with this keyboard. Turns out the receiver that we get is actually a totally generic Bluetooth adapter for your PC. So what you actually have to do is plug it in, go to your Bluetooth settings on your PC and connect it to your keyboard from there, the exact same way as we did with the smartphone or tablet. Now while this took me a little while to work out, it's actually pretty cool because effectively we're getting a free Bluetooth adapter for our PC. As far as the reliability goes on PC, again it's very good although for some reason here I did occasionally notice some lag. It wasn't really bad and didn't really affect typing accuracy, but then again, in general, I'd probably not advise using a keyboard in Bluetooth mode if you're going to be doing any serious gaming. Of course, the keyboard can also be used in wired mode with the included cable. Finally, lighting. It's RGB and it can be used in wired or Bluetooth mode, obviously it will drain your battery quicker though, so bear that in mind. Lighting is turned on and off with FN plus R. FN plus U will switch between effects. We get 9 solid colours two multicolour stripe flag things, a breathing effect which pulses through all colours, a nice rainbow wave, a couple of reactive touch modes, and finally a random multicolour key backlit mode. You can also adjust the speed and brightness with FN plus T and FN plus Y. There's not much to talk about in terms of customization, although apparently there is an app for it that enables you to fully customise the lighting. Now you'll notice that I said apparently, I also said that earlier when referring to Bluetooth modes. The trouble is, there's no manual that comes with this keyboard, only a few things written on the back of the box which are self-explanatory anyway. I saw a QR code on the box which I'm guessing is the link to the app, but instead it took me to WeChat, a text message app, so that was pretty useless. I then tried googling the manual to find out how to use this thing which comes up at the top of the search results, when you click on it, it's a blank page. 
Now that is the biggest problem I have with some of these keyboards. I've said it before, if you're going to have complex lighting systems or different modes where you have to hold FM and press specific keys, you really do need to explain it properly, otherwise it's just going to leave people frustrated. How on earth am I supposed to figure out how to put this thing into Bluetooth mode when random keys are flashing at me and I have no idea what they mean? I'm sure the online manual explains this, but currently I can't get hold of it and it's just lazy not to include it in the box. Luckily I found a forum online where someone explained a few functions that they worked out. Ok so rant over. So in conclusion would I pay the $80 price tag for this keyboard? Yeah, I think it's good value, you're getting tons of features, it's solid, it's compact and the lighting effects will be satisfying for most people. I have sent the manufacturers a message to sort out the lack of manual and app, hopefully they'll get that sorted, but if you can look past that and you're after a very small form factor keyboard, go for it. I'll leave the Amazon links in the description if you want to go check it out. Thanks very much for watching today guys, thanks for all the awesome support and I'll catch you all in the next one.